Hello guys! As most of you requested, I decided to take this video in English. Before giving you my thoughts and opinions um, about the video, about IELTS exam, uh, I want to let you know that I will go into small details um, of IELTS, so that's why um, this video should be more suitable for those who uh, prepare for IELTS and who are informed about IELTS strategies, um, all sections, especially speaking section and writing tasks one and writing task two. Uh, so uh, make sure that you know about all these strategies and then watch this video. A few days ago we had a meeting at my university with one of the uh, representatives and examiner at British Council, Gordon Phillips, and we had a really interesting discussion about um, IELTS exam, all these strategies, tips um, and, and difficulties that people face when they prepare for IELTS and it's a really good um, opinions and thoughts um, came out uh, during this discussion process so I decided to share my point, uh, my, my, uh, those views and opinions with you. One of the points that uh, was mentioned in the meeting was about setting a goal in IELTS. Uh, this, this score thing, you know, from band 1 to band 9. Some people um, want to get score 8, some people want to get 6.5, 7, and etc. Uh, he told us, Gordon told us a story of someone who uh, took an IELTS exam and got 6.5. The university required him to uh, get 6.5. He took the exam and he got 6.5, uh, but he was not happy about his score. Uh, and Gordon asked him why, he said, um, he answered, um, I didn't like, he said, I didn't like um, my score, I, I'm not happy about my score, I wanted to get 8, uh, 8 or 7.5, I don't remember, he said something higher than 6.5. And Gordon says, um, I don't understand why those people uh, want this score. Do they want or do they need this score? So in IELTS, uh, they need something is different. Want something is different. In IELTS, you should focus more on need uh, something, you know. Um, need means, for example, the university that you uh, are planning to study requires you to get 6.5. And you get 6.5 and that's it, you're done. Why do you need more than that or less than that? So that's what he says. He says that <clears throat> you should focus more on needs, not, not what you want. Uh, so he's, he, he thinks that it's meaningless. There's no sense of uh, getting you know, uh, more than 6.5 if your university requires your to get 6.5 because uh, the purpose of IELTS is to you know to get some uh, some score and give it to the uh, send the certificate to uh, <coughs> to and to the university so what else are you gonna do with this higher score right you don't need this higher score so all in all try to focus on what you need not what you want another point he mentioned was about uh, writing task one uh, all IELTS takers, all IELTS candidates know that in IELTS task 1 uh, you are given a bar chart or diagram or a process paragraph and you have to um, write um, a report about it. You, you look at the picture, diagram, process and etc. and you write a short report, 150 words uh, word report about it. Uh, and the instruction says take the main important information and write uh, it on a piece of paper. So Gordon says a lot of people uh, try to you know think a lot and take very small details from the graph and they try to make lots and lots of comparisons and they write it on the piece of paper and he says this is not uh, this is completely not okay why uh, because you have a uh, limited time it's really hard to think about very small details even people are getting confused and they uh, you know um, time they waste time thinking about this because he says that we don't uh, we don't give a score uh, to these small details even the instructions in the writing task says you should take the 
the main important information, the information that you, uh, once you look at this picture, you see that information. And you, you take that information and you write it on a piece of paper. So you don't have to think lots and lots of about it, uh, take small details and, and write them. And it's also difficult, he says that it's also difficult for the examiner to check that writing, you know, because um, he gets confused, uh, you know, he gets lost in the, uh, you know, this plenty of information, small details. Uh, so it's difficult for the examiner to, um, to check that uh, report. So that's why he says, uh, try to keep your report. Uh, he says, try to keep your report very simple and short, and try to give uh, the main information. Um, it will be good for you, and it will also be good for the examiner. Another point we discussed um, in the meeting was about writing task two. Um, as you know, I mean, as IELTS um, candidates know, um, in IELTS, in, in task two, you you're given an independent topic. You you give your opinion about a topic, and then you to support uh, your ideas, um, you have to give some examples, right? Gordon says some people give examples about statistics, uh, and you know what's wrong with this? The, it, mm, there's nothing wrong with statistics, but there's there's something wrong with you know uh, the way people give statistics because they make up they make up the statistics. That means they you know they lie. They don't know actually. There's no such a such information, but they just kind of write Harvard University statistics says blah blah blah. So uh, they lie about it. Actually, there is no such statistics. He says um, this thing is not okay. He says uh, IELTS examiners don't like it. It's better to bring examples uh, to make more general examples. Like for example, um, let's say if the task is about environmental problems. You can bring examples uh, about these um, problems, the situ about the situation in your country, for example. Um, you can also bring examples from statistics, but if you if the statistics really exist and if you know the exact number, exact percentage, then yes, you can include this information. But he says you shouldn't lie about statistics. Another point we discussed in the meeting was about memorized language. Uh, what is memorized language? That means uh, there are lots and lots of words available to use in IELTS, uh, writing and speaking. You know, there are lots of books about this IELTS vocabulary. You go and use all these words in your writing and speaking, or people go and use uh, lots of idioms because they think that um, they will get higher score um, in the exam. But it's not like that. Gordon says um, it's not correct because you go and uh, when you speak with lots of idioms or when you write lots of idioms and lots of advanced words, uh, a collection of words in your writing tasks. He knows that you learn them by heart. You learn them by heart. You don't just think and write. Because he says that you should keep your writing simple, you should keep your speaking simple. The main thing is you just should have the ability to think and um, express your opinions in English. But when you go and take or uh, overuse those words um, lots of advanced words and idioms in your writing and speaking, that means you memorized those words. He says that um, we don't give a, give a score to these um, words which have been learned by heart. You have to think and you have to just, you know, speak simple words. Uh, or write simple words, but the main thing uh, is that he's, Gordon says he wants to make sure that people uh, think themselves and write their ideas or speak their ideas. He even talked about one guy uh, who um, in the exam, in the speaking exam, he said all of his sentences were full of idioms, full of idioms. And it was very clear that he said it was very clear that he learned them, he learned those, uh, this speech, those sentences by heart. Uh, you know, um, it was not, it was not coming out of his mind. Uh, he just learned them by heart. So, you know what I mean? You have to keep it simple. You have to, uh, you know, be natural. He wants people, uh, the examiners want, want the candidates to be natural, 
and keep their speech and writing very simple. And at the end, we discussed uh, one more thing, uh, being natural, because from the beginning of the meeting until the end of the meeting, he said that the candidates, the IELTS candidates, should be uh, more natural and they should keep it simple when they, uh, you know, when they do their writing tasks and when they do their speaking, when they take their speaking tests. So, uh, but how to be natural, you know, how, uh, how to become natural. Um, natural, being natural means you start thinking in English and you start to express your opinions yourself. You don't go and learn sentences by heart. And he says that uh, the only way to be natural is to read and listen and watch lots and lots of times. Find the area that you're interested in and go and watch something about it or read something about it. You know, after that, you will start thinking in English um, and also preparing for the exam will be much more easier for you. Well, I hope this video will be useful to you. Um, I'm sure that it will, but uh, I, I really want you to um, leave comments in this video. Please let me know. Do you want me to continue videos like this in English language or do you want me to continue in Azerbaijani language? Or do you want me to continue uh, making videos mixed? like mixture of Azerbaijani and English language because maybe um, at some point people I, I, I might say some sentences or some words that are not clear to people and, and in that moment I can switch to my uh, my native language. So please let me know how was this video in comments and um, see you next time.